On the road to November 11 governorship elections in Kogi, Imo, and Bayesa states, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has alerted the public to the acts of insecurity that could affect the smooth conduct of the exercise. Elections in the three states will further test the integrity of the Electoral Act 2022, which frowns on brigandage, ballot snatching, and other vices. Also, law enforcers have been admonished not to work for ruling parties, but to work with the aim of rescuing democracy. Joining me to discuss this is Marlin Oyocha Okoli, member Imo State Gubernatorial Campaign Council, a member Election Management and Monitoring by Elsa State Gubernatorial Campaign Council. Hello, Marlin. Good to have you. Good to have you virtually on asset. Welcome back. Um, we had an unfortunate uh, challenge with the guest on the virtual on our device earlier on. I guess she's back now. Hello, Marlin. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, we need to see. You. Okay, good. So okay. How come you are in two states election campaign councils? Yes, that's because in Imo State, I'm into in media and publicity, but in BIOS, I'm in a different committee. No, I, I'm just wondering, I, I, I'm just wondering, you live in England? Uh, that is. Uh, but if I, the I, elections were not to be carried the same day, then I can cover up. But now, if it's on the same day, I'm focusing on Imo. Okay, what, what has been your experience since you came back to the country regarding uh, activities of politicians and, and the re over-reported incidents of, uh, of violence, especially, especially in Imo? Um, don't forget I'm from the neighboring streets. I'm from Abia State, and I contested for House of Reps. I ran for House of Reps just this uh, past 2022-2023. It was not easy. It was difficult, I must say, because, like you said, the security, the, uh, should I say the insecurity back in the East, in Alibo, is really, really bad affecting us, especially APC. I ran under the platform of APC, so it hasn't been easy. But if you ask me how it is now with the uh, purpose of Emma trying to come, we call it four plus four, coming second time around, he has done a lot of work making sure that um, especially Imo State is safe enough for people to campaign and run, come, on, come out and vote. No, but the considering the fact that, considering the fact that he was the, immediately he came and remember his house was burnt down, Made sure the security in Ibo, he's still working on it, but um, the security in Ibo land is getting better than it was. Uh, one is just wondering what an average Ibo light would feel like uh, trying to get out on the day of the elections to go out and vote, given the threats by some criminal entities given the fact that in recent times the state had suffered some unfortunate incidents by some uh, criminal elements. Uh, one is just wondering how well the average Imolite elector would be confident to go out and, and perform his or her civic duty on the 11th of November. Was your um, like I, I, I initially stated the, the security aspect of it is getting better. For instance, there's been um inauguration and flag off towards this election. During the inauguration, when we got there, there was it was it wasn't complete safe heaven, but it was almost like a safe heaven because a lot of people came out. And the flag off this past day, two Saturdays ago, he had a flag off. It shows that Imo youths are no longer scared to come out. 
because the flag off in that stadium, I was there, I was not expecting the amount of, the multitude of egos that came out, and of youths that came out. And um, yes, the sec like I said, there are pockets of violence here and there, but it, it's not like it was before. It has been curtailed. And the, the security setups that was put, put in place now, in Imo state, are there anybody that wants to come and disrupt the election? Mali, people, Ma yes, you will agree with me that because you move around with the, the governor and the governor's re election uh, campaign council or team, you naturally will see uh, you see enough security to forestall any unfortunate incident from some criminal elements. I'm just sitting there now wondering if I were to be, say, an opposition candidate in Imu, would I have the courage of character without the same level of security that you see with the governor to want to go out there and campaign? The, 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 it's, not, it's not, I did, first off, I did not move around with the governor's entourage, no, or the security with the, of the governor, no. Yes, I had a bit of protections, security guardian, but it wasn't like I needed heavy security to go around. Yes, like I said, during the, when we were doing the campaign, when we were doing run for election, it was difficult, it was more difficult then to move around than now. Between the May 25th of last year, and now, a lot has changed in Imo State, I must tell you. And the amount of years, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, pockets of, uh, pockets of, um, this, uh, 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 of uh, violence here and there. But people, they, they, uh, people are not blind. There were places, things were put in place to subdue the violence. There are three major places, uh, don't get me wrong, there are three major places, like our new zone is one of the places that this insurgency is a lot. But then, those places, the main... Uh, and the government is from Olu, and the government is from Olu, I guess? Yes, it is from Olu, yes. Uh, are his people, and then, are, are his people not quite, uh, not quite, don't quite want him to be re-elected, or why would the violence be pronounced in Olu when... When they are the, the, way, the, thing, the way things are going now, I must tell you, frankly, the way things are going, I don't know who doesn't want him to come back. He has done so much now, not just the security we're talking about. The infrastructure of Imo State has changed a lot. And I give credit to Hope who's Okay, let, 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 me quickly, make, let me quickly say this at this juncture. Uh, we really want to be fair and balanced. If you're watching, exactly. if you're watching this program and you belong to any other uh, major parties, PDP, LP, either in Imo, Bayelsa, or Anambra, we would be too glad to give you the same opportunity that we are according uh, the lady who openly professes to be. A governor who uh, 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 supporter. Sorry, Marlene, I need to do that. You know, I need to do that. Given where the two of us got a uh, uh, journalistic uh, 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 training, I need to yes. let the public know that we we want to be very fair and balanced here. But having said that, it's quite uh, it's quite I must say very heartening, very pleasing to know. That the security situation in Imo is uh, is getting better. It used yes. to be it used to be when elections would want uh, would uh, was about taking place in Bayelsa. Bayelsa used to have the infamy of violence, but suddenly now between Imo and Kogi, Bayelsa seems to to be dwarfed on reports of violence on this occasion. Isn't that strange to you, of a sort? Um, I don't think there's nothing there's nothing strange in um, putting up 
when securing yourself when you're about to run an election. And there's nothing wrong in that. And especially where you think that there are there are problems. If you feel that uh, there are negative things for you, you have to protect yourself first before uh, any other thing. With hope, was that the man? Hope, yes, started because of the hatred and all that that they had without knowing exactly who this man is. They started, they started negatively with any one state. And I must say, right from the time getting to these three years plus that he has been there, Europe has been the, the, the most challenged, and I tell you, the most challenged governor. In that, right from the day one he entered there, there's been no peace in Imo State. I was one of the people that was clamoring on that uh, camp hope. Since he's gotten there already, give him chance, let's see if there will be difference. And I tell you now, Bola, there's a lot of difference. Not because I'm supporting Opus Zadema, and not because I'm APC. If you check the antecedent of the people that were there, and you talked about all, all the parties, the three major parties, people running now with him. Is it some daddy from PDP, or is it a, 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 a Senator Acho, 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 that, that will comp compete with Opus Zadema? Check their history, you know? Yes, you might say, during his turn of this, 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 that, there's insurgency, there's uh, ins insurgency in Imo State. It was created by the opposite, the opposition. It was created, it wasn't, if they had given this man chance to come in and not completely, completely saying, uh, oh, he came in the back door, he came this, he came, give him chance to work. And the few time, I give you two years, out of these three and a half, he has been there. That he has been there in Imo State. There's a lot of changes. You need to come to Imo State to see. Okay. This is security like we noticed was bad. If I'm telling you now, if you ask me to put a percentage, I'll tell you 70% is less than it was before. Uh, okay. I went, when I was going back for my election, I take it back again. On Monday, sit at home. You could not travel in Imo State. But now, you can drive straight on a Monday. Uh, in okay. Imo State, and nothing will happen. Okay, Marlin, I wish you all the best. Uh, keep safe. Mm -hmm. They want you. They want you back, Hill and Arty, safe and well in England. So be safe. My best wishes. Thank you so much, brother. You're welcome. It's good. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. Today's throwback. The man who defied white superiority by democratizing through the principles of cooperation, wealth creation, and educational opportunities for fellow blacks in Yoruba land and parts of Southeast Nigeria, Jacob Kende Koka. Just around when our subject yesterday, James Pinson Labula Davis, JPL Davis, was settling in Lagos as a repatriate or a returnee. A set of twins was born in a poor Ake Abel Okuta on the 6th of September 1866 to James Oshodu Koka. Jacob Kainde Koka was the younger of the twins. His brother later became Dr. J. O. Koka. They attended Ake school. He later moved to Lagos to be with his family and continue his education at Breadfruit Church School. He spoke of his interest in church matters while at Ake School. He was a personal assistant to the late Reverend Lee Jadu, that is Stephen Shofoluka, Reverend James Johnson, and other lay preachers who were in charge of the church at the Oro Ake. At the revival service conducted by Johnson in 1884, J.K. Koka became more convinced of his commitment to the Christian faith and therefore accepted Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. He later became a full member of Breakfast Church, Lagos. Before the close of the 19th century, he had been appointed the People's Warden of the Church, thus assuming an office that demanded great responsibility and influence for selfless service both to the church and to the community. He also decided to acquire some land in the Fakwa area of Agege in 1885 a suburb of the colony of Lagos that was close to JPL Davis's cocoa plantation at Ijon, near Adion River, to grow cotton and kola nut trees. 
This gave him more economic freedom as a young man and equally made his ministry effective because he was affluent and a time to look after the interest of the church with integrity. I hope many of our faith I hope many of our faith premiers or religious shakedown artists can see genuine belief powered by industry and integrity. J.K. Coker became very popular because of his warm personality and his ability to help others find economic fulfillment. A lot of the young people at Brefri Church loved him and readily followed his decisions at any time. At about this time, the European missionaries quickly detected the brilliance of Africans and feared that they would be ousted if care was not taken. A series of repressive measures were therefore taken to discourage African church workers, especially those that they felt could go far in priesthood. In priesthood. Stringent rules and regulations were introduced into the church regarding polygamy, baptism, confirmation, and marriage, which kept many traditionalists from coming forward for baptism. Islam spread more quickly in areas such as Abe Okuta, Ijebu, Lagos, and Ibadan, where Europeans dominated the priesthood for many years, as opposed to areas like Elisha, Ondo, Ekiti, Niger Delta regions, where Africans largely pioneered and created the missionary works. These problems led to various schisms within the Anglican Church, similar to the ones in the Presbyterian Mission in Calabar in 1882 and the Lagos Baptist Church in 1884. Such schisms were barely averted in the Methodist Church, Lagos, in 1884. Many Africans became well educated and had university degrees, while most of the white missionaries had no such thing. To cover this inadequacy, many of them were oily given honorary degrees so as not to be superseded by the well-educated Africans. In fact, it is known that the consecration of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder caused heated exchanges of letters between Henry Venn and European missionaries in Africa, especially under the leadership of Henry Townsend. In such petitions were sentences like this, I quote, Native teachers of whatever grade have been received and respected by the chief and people only as being the agents or servants of white men. Not because they are worthy, our esteemed brother, Mr. Crowder, was often treated as the white man's inferior and more frequently called so, notwithstanding our frequent assertions to the contrary. This state of thing is not the result of white man's teaching, but there's but has existed for ages past. The superiority of the white over the black man, the Negro, has been forward seek to acknowledge the correctness of this belief no white man can deny. Coca, who had been mentored by JPL uh, Davis in technique of planting the exotic cocoa on his farm at Ifako in Agege district to complement the cutting and cola nut on it, it was between 1901 and 1906 when he championed the formation of the very first wealth creation democratizing cooperative society in Nigeria, Agege Planters Union. This made Agege to become an important agricultural center of excellence because a robust agricultural training institute, which ultimately galvanized the spread of cocoa plantation to the interland of Yoruba land, the Midwest, and parts of Southeast too. The relationships he leveraged from the independent churches after he championed the founding of the African church as a splinter movement from the then discriminatory Anglican church. Many clergymen, many clergymen and laymen in the newly formed African church moved to Agege to farm to supplement their earnings and to escape from the noisy city of Lagos. Among those who joined Coca on the Agege farm were Reverend D.C. Quotes, J. A. Wright, W. B. Uba, J. S. Fanimoku, S. A. Koka, J. A. Lakeru, D. A. Hughes, and E. D. Shodein. They, among the laymen, were F. E. Williams, A. A. Obadino, J. O. Beckley, T. B. Dawodu, C. Collins Cole, S. A. Jibo, D. Karun, W. M. O. Shomefu, and I. S. M. Williams. ISM Williams was later sent to Tuskegee Institute 
in the USA to learn about scientific agriculture in order to teach the other farmers how to improve the methods of the Industri Industrial Institute founded by Elder Koka and other leaders of the African Church called Marige Planters Union. A farm stead methodology that the administration of Chief Obafemi Awolowo adopted when he became the leader of government business in 1952 in Western Region and the same cocoa became the agricultural gold that made the administration to become the press setter in qualitative governance in Nigeria. The farm quickly became a center for evangelism as well as a center for the distribution of various seeds to the farmers in the interland. Naturally, with such an extensive agricultural life, there was a need to recruit skilled labor to work in the farm. Many people came to work on the plantation from different parts of Nigeria, Nigeria's interland. Life at Ifako was advantageous to the workers in several ways. They were paid their wages, which was the main purpose of their coming. They were taught how to best uh, taught how best to plant new crops, which was to their advantage. Most of them were converted from their traditional beliefs to the Christian faith, and when they returned from home, they were allowed to take some of the crops to, to be planted in their villages. So the newly converted Christians, through the efforts of, of efforts of coca to Christianity, cocoa and cola nuts to their different homes in the interland. I hope that after listening to things like this, those of us who engage in, a form, in any form of religion these days are not using religion for divisiveness, but are using religion for the empowerment of their followers. That's it for today. I'm Bola Abba.